My name is Tiff and I am the Behavior Manager at the Humane Society of Western Montana and I am also a certified professional dog trainer. And demoing for me today is my 13 week old puppy, Paya. I'm just saying her name quietly because she's being so good chewing on her toy in the crate and I'm gonna not disturb her. Well, you'll get to see her in her cute sweater in close up later though. So the big theme for today in the world of puppy topics is, um, I mean, kind of drop it, but just kind of addressing the big theme of puppies and them getting things in their mouth. <laughs> if you have a puppy right now, um, you know that this is a reality for all puppy owners. They just get everything in their mouth, other bowl, non-edible, outside, inside, when you're watching, when you're not watching. And um, all that is normal, but we also want to keep our puppies safe. We want to be able to remove things from them. We don't want them to eat anything dangerous. And um, we'll, we're going to be addressing this topic in from many different perspectives. So let's talk about, let I me mean, just mention three main scenarios where puppies end up with things in their mouth. Scenario one is you're outside or inside and they just pick something up. You may or may not even know what it is. You just see them carrying that thing around. And maybe like me, you already get worried. That's one common scenario. Scenario two is you are playing with them. So you're, this is something that it's okay that they have in their mouth, but you want them to relinquish it when you ask, such as a toy, like a ball or a tug toy. Scenario three is some, similar to scenario one, but let's say they're already eating something. <laughs> and that's honestly the scenario that I'm most concerned about. Um, and I want to address some tips and tricks that will help with all of these scenarios. So the first thing, um, I would be irresponsible if I didn't first talk about management. So um, this might be obvious to a lot of you guys, but as much as possible, even though we don't live in a perfect world, you want to eliminate opportunities for your puppy to pick up things that they're not supposed to pick up, especially in your house where you can control as many things as possible. And as an example of management, there are so many options. Um, you know, puppies are great for inspiring people to keep their house clean. If there are socks lying around, chances are your puppy is going to pick one up. And certainly we're going to work on training tips to, so that your puppy learns to just drop it when asked. But the easiest way around that um, scenario is just to make sure that all the laundry, um, the dish towels are off the ground. Alternatively, you can put your puppy in a puppy proof space, like in a pen, in a gated off area, things like that. Um, Management is always the first step because you can only train when you're ready to train, so to speak, and then training will later allow you to um, get your puppy to relinquish things in real world situations like they're on a hike, they pick up a deer leg or something like that. So management first. Now, um, we're not going to spend this whole time talking about management. So let's talk about the first training exercise you can do. This is so easy. Your puppy is going to love it. And those of you who turned in last, tuned in last week for our coming when called um, spotlight on Thursday, this is going to seem a little familiar, but we're working on drop, not come. So I am going to demonstrate with Paya. I'm just going to move this a little closer so that you can get a super great close up. Oh, I'm attached. I might not be able to move closer. We go. All right. You get to see our cute little bear. Is she gonna make a cameo? Hey, Paya. She wants to keep chewing on her thing, which is fine. I know it's so dark because she's in her crate being a good girl. But for those of you with puppies next to you right now, this is all you need to do. Just take a little handful of their kibble. You know, five treats. I mean, you can take ten pieces of kibble. It's not a lot, or you can use training treats or cheese, but you know, about this much food, um, the number of pieces matter more than the size. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna say the word drop, and you're just gonna throw that handful of food in front of your puppy. So I'm gonna do it right now. Drop. She missed it. <laughs> She'll find it later, but there she goes. She's eating that handful of food. She's gonna return to her chew toy in the crate. Notice I'm not trying to take anything away from her right now. What I'm doing right now is conditioning the cue drop. 
This is a non-urgent situation. We always need to train in controlled scenarios like this before they are expected to work, before the behavior is expected to work in a real life situation, like when your dog picks up a chicken bone. So um, if you have your puppy with you right now, give this, a try, give this a try, and I'm gonna demo just a few more times. Um, it doesn't matter what your puppy is doing. They could be playing with a toy. They can be standing right in front of you. They don't need to have anything in their mouth right now. You just take a little bit of food and you just say the word, drop, throw it in there. Throw it right in front of their face. Let them eat it right up. I'm gonna do it one more time. So she's right here, right in front of me. And she's going back, but still your puppy could be right in front of you. Drop and just scatter that food. Oops, right in front of them. What a good girl. All right, and she'll probably go back to what she was doing, which is fine. So why are we doing this? This is so, like, you might be thinking, this is out of context. Um, you know, she doesn't have anything appropriate. I don't need to remove anything. Why am I saying the word? Well, it is so important for your puppy to have a positive association with the word drop before you use it in real life situations. Think of it this way. There are two ways of thinking about the drop exercise. You can think about it as teaching your puppy to give something up to you or you can think about it as you giving, your some pup, you giving your puppy something really great. And I know those two sound really different, but they accomplish the same goal. If my puppy has a bone in her mouth, like you know, a chicken bone or a deer leg in the woods, which has happened before, which is why I always use that example. If I always approach that scenario from the viewpoint of, I need to take it out of her mouth, that's gonna come with a whole lot of challenges later on, even if I can physically take it out of her mouth at this moment. Because what the puppy is going to learn is, hmm, when I have something nice in my mouth and people come around, especially if they say that word drop or get that out of your mouth, it always results in the struggle or the reaching or they try to take it away from me and I lose it. So even if you win that time, you need to think about behavior over the course of fu the future time and what the puppy will learn may be to play keep away or to swallow the thing really fast or to be sneaky about how they pick things up. And that's not what you want to set your puppy up for. So instead approach it from the mindset of teaching drop as I'm gonna give my puppy something great. And you actually will accomplish your goal because if your puppy is busy, real, um, busy really looking forward to your approach and eating the thing that you give them, they're inevitably gonna spit out the thing that they had in their mouth. So as at the very core, even if just tonight you just said drop and you like threw a handful of their food in their pen, that is a great way to start off on this training. Um, honestly, when I just got her, I this is what I did. I just took food, I would spontaneously say drop and just throw it in there throughout the day. And I've seen really, really great results. I'm gonna show you actual real life videos of her picking up real life trash and uh, later on right now um, during today's session. Hold on a second, Bray, take a break. He's rummaging in his food, um, in his toy box. So I'm just gonna throw my backpack over the toy box so that my other dog here can access his toys because it's noisy. I'm sorry, bud. That's an example of management. All right. Um, so as always, if there are any questions, please enter them in the chat. I'm happy to answer questions throughout any session, but I'm gonna move on for now. Um, so we just talked about this really easy starting skill or, or exercise to build the skill drop. Now you're probably thinking, you know, I have a puppy right now. She's not perfectly trained and she still picks things up all the time. So what do I do right now if my puppy picks something up off the ground. And that, that's a very, very common scenario. And um, I just said, we need to train in non-urgent moments to prepare for urgent moments. But I do wanna show you what to do when you need to remove something from your puppy's mouth. And in fact, I'm gonna approach it from two scenarios. I'm gonna approach it first from the scenario of your puppy has something in their mouth. What do you do, right? All right, so to show you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a video, but I'm also going to tell you the first thing you do is you stay calm. 
do not just reach for your puppy and try to pry their mouths open. Even though you are bigger and stronger than them and faster right now, and you can just pull the thing out of their mouth, very, very often it's something pretty harmless, like tissue paper, a stick, a small rock. And the more you kind of panic with them now, the more they're going to panic with the object later. Again, that leads to behaviors like keep away, swallowing, or even some food or resource guarding behaviors down the line. So let me do a share screen here so I can show you a real life video. Okay, so please tell me in the chat if the video isn't coming up, but I am in my files here and I'm gonna pick the trash video. Oh, my puppy. This is from last week. Piece of garbage here. The thing I don't want to do is freak out and try to wrench it out of her mouth, especially because this is looks like a piece of a dog toy and it's not harmful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some treats and I'm going to put it in front of her nose and drop it next to the piece of garbage. And if I needed to remove it, I could right now. But again, it looks like a piece of a dog toy. I mean, I probably should remove it to pick up litter. Great. And actually, I'm going to let her have it again if she wants to. I want her to learn that when I am trying to get near her when she has a random object, it's not to take it away from her. And as you can see, my puppy has no keep away response. Hi, hi, uh, and look, she just dropped it from She also has such a short attention span that she probably already forgot about it. <laughs> I'm just going to drop some treats just for extra security, and then we will throw this away. Most things puppies pick up are harmless. And of course, if that was something I was really worried about, I'd probably try to get it out of her mouth. Even so though, dropping some boiled chicken for her is more likely to than convince her to drop whatever is in her mouth compared to me chasing her down and wrenching it out of her mouth. All right, straight out of the horse's mouth, so to speak. Um, so, and I know all puppies are different. There are puppies, oh, let me stop sharing for a moment. Here I am. Um, all puppies are different. I have worked with puppies who are quicker to ingest things. In fact, my adult dog, who is so great now with just objects in general, when he was Paya's age, I actually was more worried about him because um, Paya is the kind of puppy who will pick up a stick or something and chew on it, but she will spit out pieces of sticks or fluff or whatever. My other dog would swallow it. I almost put him under surgery as a puppy because he swallowed the knot of a tug toy. And you can imagine my joy when the entire knot of the tug toy was coming out of his butt and he pooped it out. I did not have to put him under surgery. So I've been there with puppies who ingest things. And clearly, even though I'm a professional trainer, I make mistakes too, it happens. But I can almost guarantee that if you approach it from this calm mindset of you know, focusing on giving them something better rather than rushing to get it out of their mouth, not only do you have a better chance of actually getting the thing out of their mouth, but you are setting your puppy up to trust you and relinquish things to you faster in the long run. So I'm gonna pause right here for a second because we've covered a um, fair bit of material so far. I have more to show you, but please let me know if you have any questions. And I don't see any questions pop up. I know there's a lag, um, but if you enter them, I will answer them as we go. So I'm gonna show you one more short video that I took this morning actually, when I was at the horse park with her and she actually picked up a piece of horse poop, <laughs> which is quite harmless. But I, the video that you saw just now with the trash was from a week, a week and a half ago. I can look at the timestamp. And then this is from today. And I will just, um, the precursor is it happens so fast, um, her relinquishing it that you almost don't even see that she has it. So I'm gonna do a share screen again and pull up the video. Pick up some horse poop. Oh, oh, oh she, she already let go of it. So what I did was I just kind of kept walking. Horse poop is not very threatening for dogs in most cases. So if I make a big deal out of it, what she might accidentally learn is when she sees a pile of horse poop to eat as much as she can, as fast as she can. So she just picked up one tiny piece. It was pretty frozen. Even if she ate part of it, no harm. 
I would have done a drop practice, but she already dropped it. What a good girl. All right, so I do want to show you a few other things in this video. So clearly the training is kicking in. She's actually really food motivated. She loves horse poop as most dogs do. So it's, she's a normal puppy in that way, but she dropped it so fast in the beginning, it was already on the ground by the time I pulled my camera out and started filming. She did carry it for a little while before I was able to fumble around and start filming. Um, but the thing that I want to show you is, even though I'm narrating, notice that I'm feeding her as I'm walking backwards away from the horse poop. And look at that moment that she turns back. I'm actually gonna mute the video so that I can tell, um, point out right now the parts that I'm um, trying to point out here. So there's the horse poop back there. She's coming, I'm feeding her. I keep squeezing one treat at a time, not a huge glob of treats. And um, just keep watching, she's following, she's happy, which matters. Look at that. She just looked back and here she comes with me. So even though her drop is really good, the reason why I'm following up with this, what we call a high rate of reinforcement and high value treats is I want to teach her that coming away with me leads to really, really good things. Unlike the video previously with the trash on the ground, I did not let her go back to the horse poop. I did not want her to continue eating it, but I still need to show her that doing what I want, which is following me instead of going back to the horse poop yields great results. Could I have picked up her leash and just walked her away? Yes, but what she would have learned is, oh, I just missed out on my chance there. Following you doesn't really give me anything great. Next time I'm gonna eat the treat and then run back to the trash or whatever as fast as I can. And I don't want my dog to learn that. So this is another great thing to do, this follow-up with the treats as you lead your dog away from the thing you want them to relinquish. All right, so, I'm going to switch gears here for a little bit and I'm going to show you a really fun and easy way to work on drop in rapid succession while also playing with your puppy. Um, we covered this a little bit in the nipping and biting um, class, if you will, and you can find that live stream either on our Facebook page or on our YouTube because we do edit these videos down and put it on YouTube for free so you guys can refer back to these references. Um, but you know, all puppies like to play in some capacity. General, oh, generally, puppies like to play in some capacity. And another scenario where puppies may not relinquish something is when they have a toy or your sleeve in their mouth. So for this, you're going to need a tug toy, so something long and flimsy, and you're going to need some of their kibble. I am going to tilt the screen here so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to go get her. Good girl, Paya. All right, so here's my tug toy. It's long and flimsy. I'm gonna to try to stay in the frame here. So when you tug with your puppy, just tug as you normally do, tug. So here I am, I'm playing with her. With one hand, my other hand is going to reach for some treats or food. This is just her for a kibble. And she already knows this, but let's say your puppy is new and they don't know the D word. What you're going to say is what you're going to do is say the word first and then immediately put the food right in front of their nose. So I'm going to do it right now. Drop. And I'm squeezing these treats in her, into her mouth. Because the food was right in front of her nose, she started eating immediately. And as a consequence, she dropped this. And then you can just start playing with your puppy again. Let me see if I can move a little closer with her too. I'm gonna do it again. So here we go, we're playing, we're playing. So one hand is on the toy playing. The other hand is reaching for some treats in a sneaky way. And I'm going to say the word first, then put the treats in front of her nose. It helps to have more than one. I have maybe three to five pieces, so I can squeeze them out one at a time. Draw. And so I put the treats right there, and I'm squeezing them one, two, three treats. If you have a puppy with you right now, go grab a long tug toy, go grab some of their kibble or some treats, and let's give this a try. If you're just watching, I'm going to do this just for a minute, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Done. 
Yeah. Oh, you got it. You got it. Drop. Yeah, you're such a nice dog, huh? I actually didn't say good girl because she usually drops it when I say that word. <laughs> what a good girl. Well, she didn't there. Yeah. Yeah. Drop. My sleeve was in the way, but I put it right in front of her nose. All right, I'm going to demonstrate because I am past this step. What this does is it conditions your puppy to love the word drop and to think, Drop means I'm about to get some food. So I better open my mouth and drop what's in it so that I can eat the food that you're about to give me. Tug. So what I'm gonna do this time, just to show you where she's at, is I'm gonna say the D word without taking the food out first, but I am absolutely gonna reward her when she relinquishes this toy. So she's really into it. Yeah, oh, tug. Yeah, yeah, drop. Good girl. So she see how she released and I'm gonna just scatter some treats, much like that first exercise I showed you where you just scatter treats after saying the word. That's the first step that I started with. And I'm gonna do it one more time to show you when she's done eating. Kaya. Oh, you got it. You got it. Yeah, drop. Whoa, what a good girl. Excellent. So please let me know if you have any questions about this exercise. I'm just going to wait a few seconds for any questions to pop into the chat. And while I wait, I'm going to pop her back into her pen real quick. Are you caught up? Are so good. Thank you for the compliment on my pup in the chat. I have worked very hard with her and there's so much more work to be done. And most of all, I'm so happy to share it with you guys because all puppy owners work so hard. <laughs> Am I right? All right. So um, just checking my notes here. Yep, so just the tug and drop. I mean, playing is something we naturally do with our puppies. So what a great fun way to start teaching them this drop cue so that you can use it in other situations later. All right, the last scenario I'm gonna share with you guys is teaching your, um, or working on this in a very low key natural way through the normal things you do with your puppy all the time. I mean, I'm sure all of us um, give our puppies chews and toys or Kongs and you don't need to turn that into a five minutes training session. You can do five seconds of training with them and it will add up into very effective drop type exercises when they grow up. So what I'm going to do is I am going to give my puppy this pig's ear. So exciting for her. And I'm gonna show you some easy things you can do while your puppy is just naturally chewing on things that will teach them a solid drop down the line. So I'm just first gonna give this to her. Yes. Side note, I always have her enter her kennel before giving her something good, even though she can bring it out later. So there she goes. She loves pig's ears. I'm not going to let her eat that whole thing. <laughs> though she's, her teeth are, she still has those puppy teeth, of course. So it would take her a long time to eat that at this age. All right. Um, while I let her settle in, yes, to answer a question, we will be covering jumping and chewing. In fact, anyone watching this, I said this kind of in the beginning, I started a little early. If you have any specific topics you would like to see us cover, we're gonna be live streaming free puppy training and behavior tips all winter long, Wednesdays at six o'clock. Um, and I could can talk all year about puppies, but if you have a really big topic that you want us to cover fast, please just post it, your, um, your topics in the chat, and we will definitely work that into our schedule sooner rather than later. All right, so she's chewing on her pig's ear. 
very normal situation. I mean, here's what a lot of people do, which is which I want to do right now. I want to actually go play my video game while she's chewing because now is a moment that I don't need to think about my puppy. Well, I am going to think about her because if that was a piece of garbage on a hike, I'm going to want her to be able to relinquish it to me. And as I keep saying, we need to start that kind of training in the home. So what I'm going to do, I have a few goodies next to me here. I have some canned dog food and a spoon. I also have some um, mozzarella cheese cut up into small pieces. In general, for all training, the value of what you have to offer or your reward should match or exceed the value of the distraction or what your dog has. So in the first thing I exercise I showed you where I just said drop and drop kibble, I mean, that could work here, but I do want to teach her that anytime she has something valuable in her mouth, I have something better. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not even gonna try to take it away from her. She can do her thing. I'm just gonna get a little you know, teaspoon, tablespoon of wet food. I'm just gonna walk up to her pen, say the D word, let her lick the canned food off the spoon and walk away. So let's see if I can set this up. It's so dark, huh? And she's such a dark puppy. Let me see if I can pivot this around. So there she is chewing on her pig's ear and I'm gonna do it. Come on. See how she immediately got up? That is through training. <laughs> she just knows I always have something better for her. Oh, my spoon wasn't all the way in. So she ate the canned food. Away goes my spoon. I'm going to walk away. And she gets to continue enjoying her pig's ear, like what she's doing right now. So this is a straight um, continuation of the first exercise. The first exercise where you, I said drop and threw food in when there's nothing going on, taught her that the word drop means something good is coming for her. This exercise teaches her that when she has something valuable, the human approaching is here to give her something even more valuable. I still do wanna say the word drop for conditioning purposes because that's the word that's gonna get her to do this later on. Um, but notice I'm not trying to take it away. Again, when I teach drop, I'm not focused on teaching the skill from the mindset of needing to take things away. I teach it from the mindset of always giving something better so that in the long run, when I do need to take something away, it is a non-issue. I'm gonna do this one more time with a cheese scatter instead. So just hang tight. All right, so just a few pieces of cheese right here, cheese here. And same thing, I'm not trying to take things away. I'm just teaching her when she is has something really, really high value, I gives her something better. Drop. And then I'm gonna let her continue eating. Nice and easy. I'm actually gonna let her chew on that for the rest of this live stream. I do have a few more things to go over with you guys. All right, in both examples, notice that even though I had the treat ready, she actually did look up and stop chewing on the word, the cue, and not when I put the treat out. Um, rest assured, this training doesn't mean that for the rest of your puppy's life, you need to walk around with treats and be ready to trade them at any time. Um, I can get my adult dog to relinquish anything from his mouth, treats or not, because of all of the practice and conditioning we did with him when he was a puppy. So. There will be a time and I can't tell you when. I mean, right now I can get her to drop things without treats. I am just still rewarding her because I am still building this trust and relationship with her. She's so young. Puppies' personalities change as they grow older, as they become adolescent dogs. And I just wanna keep this up. The good news with this exercise I just showed you is you only need to do it once. So think about when you give your dog a Kong, your puppy a Kong, when you give her a new toy, when you give her a bone to chew on, all you do is you grab a thing of high value treats. You just say, drop, throw it in, done. That's your training rep for the day. And it will absolutely work. I do not do this training for 10 minutes at a time. I don't do any training for 10 minutes at a time. And it all adds up. So um, I two more quick things I want to show you. One is a video taken this week on when I actually need to take something away from her. So I'm going to get into share screen one more time. And I'm gonna show you this one. Oh. 
chewing on a pigskin roll, which is totally fine, but let's make pretend she is almost done with it and she's down to the end, and I'm worried that she might swallow the end piece and I want to remove it. If I only go and take things away from her, she's going to catch on real fast and she might either play keep away in the long run or just swallow that end piece really fast before I can get it and I want to avoid that. So what I have instead is uh, well, a durable dog toy that is smeared with canned food and frozen. So I'm going to show her that every time I take something away from her, she gets something even better. Drop. Good girl. I'm going to just throw this over there. And then I'm just going to remove this. She probably won't even miss it because she's so busy on that. Nice and easy. I do always have a stash. Oh, sorry, I'm just trying to close things down. Um, I do always have a stash of frozen treats because that is something I, that's safe for my dog to eat. I give it to her in her pen, in her crate, and for quick little training things like this. So the last thing I want to um, share, and I will I will um, check the chat for questions to answer as well, is, you know, things happen. In fact, I have in my backpack, I'll just leave it there for now, something that my puppy actually swallowed. It actually looked like a piece of a rat poison pellet, but I'm not sure what it was. Um, what happened was that someone was trying to pry it out of her mouth and she swallowed it, as puppies do. So as always with puppies and ingesting things, you do want to have your vet's number or the emergency vet number on hand at all times. And you also want to have hydrogen peroxide. Um, always follow the advice of your vet, whether it's your regular vet or an emergency vet. But the general gist of this, as a trainer explaining this, I'm not a vet, I just need to say that, is hydrogen peroxide makes dogs vomit. Um, and the when she ate that little thing, we induced vomiting within 10 minutes, she threw it right up in a way where we actually still have the pellet. So even though I'm a trainer, things happen. I totally get it. And we need to train to the best of our ability so that situations like that happen as little as possible. Um, but you know, we don't live in a perfect world. I do think, and um, I do know that all of these tips will help you establish a great trusting relationship with your puppy mm -hmm. and they will be happy to relinquish things to you in the long run. So I'm going to do go into this chat real quick and I am going to look at the questions. So I have two questions that are similar. The first question is human food like cheese and meats. Is that OK? The second question is I'm doing all of this training. It seems like they're getting so many treats. Do I consider the amount of treats that I'm giving her throughout the day? Um, so they're similar. To answer question number one, yes, any human grade food that's safe is something I would use for my puppy. So um, generally speaking, cheese, I mean, at the shelter, we use tons of hot dogs and cheese that are donated to us for our shelter dogs. I mean, yeah, it can cause diarrhea for some dogs, but very, very rare in all of the training classes, all of the puppy classes, all of the shelter training that we do, very rare to see the treat be the cause of upset stomach. The second thing, I can talk about treat usage all day, but um, this, I just came from a lesson at the shelter. This is not the amount of cheese my puppy gets in a day. I just went on a one hour outing with her this morning. And this is the amount she got a day. By using human grade food that's safe for dogs, I am saving money by not buying a lot of store um, processed dog treats. And also I'm using something higher value. So think about how cheap a little stick of, you know, um, generic brand mozzarella or cheddar cheese is. Think about how much a bag of premium cheese flavored training treats cost. And the dog will often prefer the actual product over the meat flavored thing. Though I do have store-bought treats, of course. I just, you know, when I'm in the, when we're working on teaching her to focus around other dogs, I need to think about whether or not she's going to want to work for me if I just have praise, petting, and her kibble. The answer is no. So this is all I use today. And that's all she's going to get in the way of treats. Canned food, I can show you because I have this here. She gets maybe two Kongs a day or like toys with things smeared in them, whether it's a Kong or not. And 
Nah, this is the amount of canned food I put in per Kong. It's about a tablespoon and a half or so. Um, and it's canned dog food. So it's just giving her more dog food. And in terms of the treats I've been dropping all the time throughout this, this is her everyday kibble. Oh, just dropped some on my laptop. Um, I'm following the bag guidelines for her um, estimated weight and her age and her actual weight right now. So she gets about one and a half cups of the kibble brand that I'm feeding right now. And she earns all of it through training, all of it. So if I showed you her body condition, you can actually see her ribs as she's inhaling. That's how trim she is. I like to keep my puppies trim. And my other dog is super trim too. It's more about how you use food throughout the day with your dog. And absolutely training is not about giving them blocks of cheese and hot dogs and all of that. So great questions. I love talking about treats. All right, so um, thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free to leave any other questions in the chat. And, as, oh, um, and if you have any specific puppy topics you want us to address, please leave that idea as well. Tomorrow, Thursday at six o'clock is our behavior spotlight. Uh, Meg, a certified professional dog trainer who works with me at the shelter, she's amazing. She's going to be presenting on how to tire out your dog indoors. It's going to be fast paced and fun. And even though our Thursday behavior spotlights are for any dogs, they are completely appropriate for puppies as well. So we hope to see you there. So I'm just going to pull up my end card real quick to show you some general resources that um, so you can reach out to us at any time. Um, if you have any questions, and especially questions that if I don't cover today, please feel free to email me at any time. Uh, we have a behavior team member on staff seven days of the week, and you can email us at behavior at myhswm.org. And as always, we appreciate any contribution you can make towards our shelter. We are a privately funded nonprofit and any amount you can contribute will go towards the care of our shelter pets and the continuation, continuation of these kinds of programs. That said, um, thank you so much for being here tonight. And I hope to see you um, tomorrow and next Wednesday for another fun puppy topic. Have a good night.